Let's take a look at the cash flow worksheet on the financial calculator. Up until now, we've been using the time value of money functions, and that's this row here, N, I slash Y, PV for present value, PMT for payment or annuity, FV for future value. There's also a cash flow worksheet where you can put numbers in. And you see that CF0 comes up. That means that this is the cash flow at time period 0. And there, it equals 0. It's set to 0 right now. And you can scroll down. And I have some numbers in here. So the first thing I want to teach you how what to do is how to clear this. And let's try and get back. Let me see if I can get back to CF0. If I just hit this clear business, it's not cleared. If I bring up the cash flow worksheet again and I scroll down, you can see there's still some numbers here. All right, that doesn't work. I can't just hit second clear worksheet because it doesn't know what worksheet to clear. So if I hit CF and I scroll down, there's still numbers there. What I have to do is I have to call up the worksheet by hitting CF and then I have to hit second CLR work, okay, or the, the clear key, second and this clear key. Now you'll notice there's nothing here. We've cleared this worksheet. And that's what we want to do to start off with. Now, if we want to put some numbers in, for example, if I put 100 in, you'll notice that equal sign disappeared. And if I scroll down, if I hit this arrow key and I go down and then I go back up, it didn't take the 100. You have to make sure you remember to hit the Enter key. When we use the time value of money functions, you didn't have to do that. You just typed in 2 and then hit N and it was already registered in the calculator. So you have to make sure you do that. Okay, once you put in a cash flow for year 0, and usually this is going to be negative. In fact, I'm going to set it back to 0 for right now because I, I really don't want to use it. Usually it's 0 or usually it's negative because these will allow us to calculate net present value. Net present value is the present value of a stream of cash flows minus the cost. And when you take corporate finance, when you do, there are calculations called NPV calculations that help you decide whether to undertake a project or not. Should we build that factory? Should we buy that piece of land? Should we buy that new piece of machinery? You can use net present value. But you can also use this cash flow worksheet just to calculate present value. So let me just scroll down here, and let's let's uh, easier if we just pick an example. So let me let me give you an example here. Let's say we have cash flows. The cash flow in year one is equal to a hundred. Let's say the cash flow in year two is also equal to a hundred. Let's say the cash flow in year three is five hundred, and we'll have the cash flow in year four that's equal to 1,000 and maybe I'll go one more cash flow in year 5 I'll make that also 1,000. Let's see how we would put those in. Well you could if we wanted to calculate present value back before we use the calculator how would we calculate? Well let's say the interest rate is equal to 8 percent we would have the present value equals 100 divided by 1.08 plus 100 divided by 1.08 squared plus 500 divided by 1.08 cubed plus 1,000 divided by 1.08 to the fourth plus 1,000 divided by 1.08 to the fifth. Okay, A little bit tedious. You could use uh, Excel to calculate this. would be, probably be a little bit better. But you could calculate this, and then calculate this, and this, and this, and this, and then just add them up, and you would get the present value. Or you can use the cash flow worksheet. So here's what we want to do. First cash flow is 100. Hit Enter. If you scroll down, you get an F01. That means frequency of cash flow 1. Well, we could put this in twice. In fact, we'll do it. We'll put it in twice, and then we'll come back and check our answers using the frequency function. So let's just assume it's once. So the second cash flow is 100. Enter. The third cash flow. Oops, got to scroll down. Got to be careful. Sometimes I wind up typing 100 for the frequency, and it doesn't work very well. 
uh, 500 for the third cash flow. The fourth cash flow is 1,000. Enter. And then the fifth, fifth cash flow is 1,000. And make sure I hit enter. I scroll down and frequency is one. I hit NPV. It's going to ask me for an interest rate. So I'm going to say 8%. Enter. I'm going to scroll down one more time, NPV, and I'm going to hit compute. And that tells me that this is worth 1,000. The stream of payments is $1,990 and 85 or $80, round up to 86 cents. All right, let's try it using the frequency, okay? Th there were only two cash flows here, it wasn't a big deal, but what if you had 10 of these? Rather than putting it in 10 times, you could use the frequency function. Let me clear this, right? Remember, second clear worksheet. So I'm going to scroll down, I'm going to say the first cash flow is 100, enter, and I'm going to say frequency is 2, enter. Okay, so I don't have to put it in twice. Now I've taken care of these two cash flows. The next cash flow is 500, enter. That only has a frequency of 1, so I don't have to change it. And then the third cash flow and the fourth cash flow are 1,000, enter, and the frequency is 2. And I'm going to go down to... NPV. It's going to ask me for an interest rate, 8%. Enter. And I'm going to compute NPV, and we should get the same answer, and in fact we do. So it's a little bit easier to do it that way by taking advantage of the way the cash flow works. So this is a, a nice function when you have a stream of cash flows, if you have 10 or 15 cash flows, especially if they're all the same number, and then you have some different ones. So it's not an annuity. In the case of an annuity, if these were all $1,000, then we could use these time value of money functions. But they're not. They're different. And again, we can calculate this one at a time, but what if I had 15 or 20 of these and the first five were 100 and the next five were 500 and the next five were 1,000 and the next five were 1,500? Eh, it's kind of tedious. By using this, we don't have to put it in quite as many times. It does a calculation for us. Works out very nicely. So it's a nice function to use even when you're just calculating present value.